Welcome to a video on the band reject filter. In this video we will look at what Q factor means for band reject filter. Then for the band reject filter we will look at the design um, circuits and equations. Then we will do some design problems, some simulations and lastly I will show you what the effect is of cascading or interesting things that we can do by cascading band reject filters and other filters. Right, so for the band reject filter, we are getting rid of a particular frequency or a very narrow band of frequencies. So the Q factor describes this narrow band right here. So the higher the Q factor, the narrower this becomes and the more flat our pass band will be until we dive into this endless pit right here. So lower Q factors will open this up more and more and more and our pass band won't be as flat anymore. But we still calculate our bandwidth the same way minus 3 dB points, high frequency minus low frequency and the Q factor is the frequency that we're trying to get rid of divided by the bandwidth that we want. Okay, so the circuit is kind of simple. It is various capacitors and resistors of the same size. Here we have a resistor that is half the size and here we have a capacitor that's double the size. RA and RB is responsible for the Q factor, so tuning RB we can tune our Q factor. All of these other components is responsible for our rejection frequency. Okay, so this is basically a combination high pass, low pass filter with multiple feedback paths. So, the final gain will be the gain that we set for the non-inverting amplifier right here with RB and RA. So our output will be amplified a little bit. So 1 plus RB over RA. As I said, RB is responsible or can be tunable for our Q factor because K is the only variable featuring in our Q factor. So 1 over 4 minus 2 times K. Note that K must always be smaller than 2. Anything larger and we will turn this band reject filter into an oscillator. Choosing the rejection frequency is straightforward. So 1 over 2 pi RC and that's all the R's and C's we see here. Remember that if we place two capacitors in parallel, that we add their values, so we can use four of the same capacitors in the circuit. And for resistors, if we put two in parallel, the value halves. So we can also use four of the same resistors right here. So, Let's jump to a design problem. The typical one would be to get rid of some power supply noise in a system. So most countries it's 50 hertz, other countries like the US it, it will be 60 hertz. So this is a typical um, use for a band reject filter right here. So let's design for 50 Hz with a bandwidth of 10 Hz. Use one microfarad capacitor, calculate all the components and simulate the problem. So you can pause the video and quickly do the calculations and let's see what we come up with. Right. So the solution would be to first calculate the Q factor. So 50 Hz divided by 10 Hz is a Q factor of 5. From that we can calculate our 
ratio of resistor B to resistor A. So the gain is 1.6 volts per volt. If we choose a resistor A, 1 kilo ohm. RB should be around 600 ohms. And the closest E192 value is 604 ohms. Okay. These filters are extremely sensitive to component choices. If you're even off by a couple of ohms, the filter can be off balance. So the one side will have more gain than the other side. Or your center frequency can be totally off. So if you're trying to get rid of a specific frequency at a high Q factor and your center frequency is off, you're not going to get rid of that frequency. It's going to become a problem. You're still going to see the presence of that frequency after the filter, but a high presence of that frequency. Okay. So, moving on. We can, at this point, design for a Q factor of 100. Since RB is responsible for the Q, we can just redesign the value of RB and that goes to 980 ohms and 976 is the closest E192 e value. Note that this is already coming extremely close to a 1 kilo ohm resistor and the moment that this reaches 1 kilo ohms our circuit can become unstable because if this ratio is 1 K is equal to two so always check that you don't push this filters with a positive feedback um, to to become oscillators right moving on if we choose our capacitors one microfarad and we plug it into this equation with 50 hertz in the position of f0 we get a 3.183 kilo ohm resistor Right, the closest is 3.2 kilo ohms for E192. Taking two capacitors in parallel, two microfarad, two resistors in parallel is 1.6 kilo ohms. So let me open the simulation and let's see what our result is. So in this simulation, I have gone and set up our band reject filter and I included this resistor RB as a variable, so 604 ohms for a Q of 5, 806 for a Q of 10, and 976 for a Q of 100. The original of the design was for the Q of 5, the 10 and the 100 is to see the different responses. Alright, so if we run this, and we have our output at the out right here, the Q of 100 is the center one. Note that every, every frequency is sitting here on 50 Hz. And as the Q decreases, this gain decreases a bit. This roll into this hole is becoming a larger area. Okay, so it's not as flat anymore. So, yeah, if your design frequency in the center of your resistor values is spot on, you can see that this is a little bit off. You can get rid of a single frequency very, very efficiently. This is nice for medical equipment uh, where they sometimes need to get rid of power supply noises. So, yeah, the, the higher the Q, the more tuned this will be to get rid of a single frequency as Q reduces your bandwidth will increase. So let's go over to the second problem. Our second problem is to design a 10 kilohertz band reject filter with a bandwidth of 1 kilohertz. We should use 100 uh, one, uh, 10 nanofarad capacitors in our design and E192 resistors 
and we should redesign this for 100 hertz bandwidth also simulate the problem pause the video and i will be back with a solution in a moment okay so the solution is the same as the previous one calculate the q factor we get it as 10 that is 1.8 volt gain choosing resistor a 1 kilo ohm we should end up with a 806 ohm resistor for a Q of 100 or 100 hertz bandwidth we should end up with 976 ohm resistor right here so this Q to resistor B relation is exactly the same as the first problem for the resistors and capacitors on this side Choosing 10 nanofarads, we get the 1.6 kilo ohm resistor, and that goes over to having a 20 nanofarad and 806, or if we use a parallel combination, 800 ohms for half the resistance. So let me open up the simulation here. So here is our band reject filter. Let's run our simulation. The Q factor for 10, Q factor for 100. Let's get rid of the phase. And we can see that this rejects almost at 10 kHz. So due to the selection of resistors, this has now shifted to the left. So as I said earlier, these are very sensitive to component choices so if you're struggling to match the frequency exactly probably go for a slightly larger bandwidth so that the frequency you're trying to reject falls within this gap right here right let's look at a cascaded problem for this problem, I designed two band reject filters, which I'm going to use with a band pass filter from one of the previous videos. And let's see what we get. If we take this first band reject filter, it's rejecting at 2, 3, 4 kilohertz. This one is rejecting at 8 kilohertz. And from the previous videos, our band pass filter was for a, a 4, a 6, and 8. So what's going to happen if we cascade a 4 reject, a 8 reject, and a 6 band pass like we have down here? And it's kind of interesting. We will have our band pass filter and very sharp rejections where we added our band pass filters. So this is very nice if you want to get one frequency out, but there is two frequencies that is too close and interfering, you can hard reject those two frequencies. So the second thing that you can take from this is that you can straightforward just cascade the band pass and band reject filters to get out whatever frequencies you want. So just designing each filter for a specific purpose, slapping them together, you can have very nice results. Okay, let's go over and do a quick transient response here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a 4, a 6, and 8 kilo hertz signal into each one of these and let's see what we get out. Okay, so for the first one right here, you can see that one frequency is being attenuated and the other two is passing. And for this one, 2 is passing, 1 is being attenuated, 
And if we look at this one, we can see that one frequency is passing and that two of them is being extremely attenuated. Okay, so let's check out the FFTs for these plots. Right, here we go. One being attenuated, two of them passing through. Take that one, close the Fourier transform. FFT of this one. The first two is passing and the third one is being attenuated. And the last output right here doing a Fourier transform. We can see that the two on the sides is being attenuated extremely hard and the middle one is being amplified. So this is a nice way to isolate a frequency for a receiver or something like that. So cascaded design can be promising with some of these filters. Thank you for watching this video on band reject filters.